today's show, Harold does some music reviews, Bill tries duck hunting, and I make a satellite dish out of a patio umbrella. And now here's a man whose name is as colorful as his wardrobe. A real fashion plate with a side order of flannel. A man who always makes the it's best if he's dressed list. Here he is, the star of our show, Mr. Red Green. <laughs> Thank you for tuning us in. We have an exciting and enjoyable show, and we also have my nephew, Harold. <laughs> okay, and back to the enjoyable stuff. All right, Harold, let's get on with the show. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Tell them about the big boat race we're having. Tell them. Oh, all right. Uh, yeah, we're having a big boat race. You know, across Possum Lake. And? Go on, and? <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's about all there is, Harold. Let's get on with the show here. No! They're having a big boat race across Possum Lake, and the winner gets to be the ferry boat captain because the ferry boat captain is retiring, so he gets the new job, whoever wins the race. <laughs> <laughs> tell, tell them why people want the job, though. Tell them that. Well, Harold, people like to be gainfully employed. <laughs> Not everybody wants your job. <laughs> no. Everybody wants to be in the race because every day the ferry boat, it goes over to Sunshine Island, and over there there's a nudist camp. <laughs> Nudists that are nude. <laughs> yes. They're sun worshippers, Harold. That's all we know. Oh, please, come on. They're naked nudists over there, Uncle Red. The old ferry boat captain only retired because he had a heart attack. He's 27. There's some kind of clue in there, I figure. <laughs> Well, everybody's just kind of guessing on this. You could sit out in a fishing boat outside that nudist camp and just pretend you were, I mean, the sun worshiper place, and you could pretend you were fishing and you could stare in there all day. I don't care how many times you peeked, you're not going to see one naked body. And apparently there is some kind of a road that goes in there where you can see them, but by golly, I've never been able to find it. I agree. It's totally disgusting, you know, as far as I'm concerned. Just saying. Well, then why did you bring it up, Harold? I didn't. Well, because the people at home want to know, and it would probably boost our ratings, you know. But in my own personal opinion, I think it is immoral and exploitive. But you don't mind making a buck off something that you think is a disgusting spectacle. Yo, babe, this is TV. That's the mark of a professional. <laughs> in the summer out behind the lodge downhill trick and slalom landing in the bog it's almost perfect skiing though it's 93 degrees it's always extremely slippery since the government declared geese an endangered species <laughs> this week on uh, handyman corner we're going to show you how to get better uh, TV reception. There's one way, it's just to switch to a different channel. But we're thinking more of one of them uh, fancy uh, satellite dish slash bowl things that let you get uh, a million stations all carrying, you know, stuff like Cheers and Mash and Lucy and that kind of thing. And we were actually thinking of uh, buying ourselves a dish at the lodge, and we went down and looked at them, and uh, these things are $1,000, $1,000. That's what we pay for houses. But I took a close look at them, and I figured, golly, I could build one of those. So all you're going to need is uh, one of these uh, patio tables, including the umbrella, and about 160 bags of chips, potato chips that is. Make sure you get the kind in the foil bag. Step one, <coughs> empty the bags. <laughs> 42. You know, maybe what we should do is just uh, maybe pour these into a into a pail, and then we can, you know, eat them later while we're watching TV. <laughs> Wish I'd thought of that a little earlier. <laughs> maybe I should have cleaned the pail out first. Well, I'll just tell the guys these chips are sour cream and onion. <laughs> Forty-three, or is that forty-four? I'll do an extra. <laughs> Oh, geez, that was my spleen. <laughs> that's, a, that's a hundred. Oh, that's good enough. Boy, this place is starting to smell like Mr. Potato Head's honeymoon suite. <laughs> 
<laughs> All right, that'll give us the reflective surface for the satellite dish. Now we need the actual dish for him, and this is where the patio umbrella comes in. <laughs> All right, first step we got to do is uh, to gently remove the umbrella from the stand. There we go. Now we got an inverter, flip her over, and <laughs> point her back out into space. I'll just aim her up through the hole in the lodge roof there. <laughs> and now we'll secure it on there using the handyman secret weapon duct tape. No problem. I guess you wouldn't want to give me a hand, eh, Harold? <laughs> hands are all greasy from something. <laughs> okay, now, I've, I've really laid uh, the duct tape in there because uh, you got to allow for wind, especially after 44 bags of chips. <laughs> and uh, what we've got here now is uh, a, a concave uh, reflective surface, at least we will have once we add the foil bags to her. And what that does is it focuses all the electromagnetic waves from way out in the space right up here into our into our receiver. Get that. There. So right there now. Now, what I have to do is I have to open up all the bags like this and attach them uh, inside the dish. And I could do I could do that with duct tape, but it's gonna take a whack of duct tape, and that's gonna cost you a fair coin. So I got an idea that's free. You know, uh, all of them paint cans you've been keeping in the garage or down the basement, you know, for years and years because they got a half inch of paint in them or something, and they're still good. So you don't throw them out, you just store them for a while until they smell like old fish, and then you throw them out. Well, you don't need to throw them out. We can use them here as an adhesive to stick the, uh, to stick the foil bags right onto the umbrella. <laughs> oh. 39. You know, I'm using the paint like wallpaper paste. I, actually, I do have some wallpaper. Well, it doesn't matter. This is going to take a little bit longer than I thought, so why don't we just get on with the show, and when I get her all done, I'll bring you right back. And hook her up and make her, make her work. Well, that's 39. And now here's the part of the show where we expose those three little words that men find so difficult to say. I don't know. <laughs> and here to prove that point once again on the expert portion of the show is my Uncle Red and Mr. Dougie Franklin. Go. Dear experts, there is a woman at our office who I find very interesting, and I would like very much to marry her and bear her children. <laughs> However, before making a lifelong commitment, I think we should meet first. So far, she doesn't even know that I'm alive. Any ideas? Well, I'm kind of with her on this one, Harold. I don't think the guy's alive either. <laughs> Uncle Red, I don't think sarcasm helps a shy person. Believe me. Well, Harold, with me, you either get sarcasm or total silence. She got a uh, stock exhaust system. <laughs> I don't know. It, it's kind of hard to tell from this picture of him, he said. <laughs> I just uh, was wondering, maybe you might want to upgrade to a thrush, you know, or uh, get a little body work done, chop the front end down, jack the back end up a little, you know. Oh, yeah, no, that's a good point. My mom had that done after she stopped having kids. Uh, Dougie's talking about the guy's car. Uh, Pardon me, but how would an engine rebuild get this fella closer to the girl of his dreams? Harold, your first rule, if you want to be noticed, is you got to make sure your car makes a lot of noise. You know, big thunder exhaust system and peel some rubber out of the parking lot. <laughs> well, I would agree with you if this fellow wanted to meet, say, you know, a policewoman. <laughs> I was just thinking, you know, maybe he, uh, he might want to drop a racing can in her and uh, get a holly carb, maybe some Mopar headers. Get that engine so she's just idling real rough and tough, you know, kind of like a 
For those of you who just tuned in, this is not the German version of the show. It is autumn. The leaves are burning. But not from the maple. Not the leaves from the oak or the old sycamore. These are the leaves of the dining room table. Last time we have fondue in this house. 99. Should be one more. I thought I had 100. <laughs> oh, well, I should do it. So there you are. You're, you're all tied right in now to the International uh, Satellite System, part of the Great Video Information Network. Uh, you got a thousand channels at your fingertips. Uh, let's, uh, let's crank her up and see what we can pull in here. <laughs> 